In this tutorial, I want to talk to you about 2020 paper two, question seven. We're talking about a biodegradable cone here. We're told the slant height of the cone is nine centimeters and the radius of the cone is 3.3 centimeters. We're asked to work out the vertical height of the cone. You have to recognize that the three measurements, the radius, the vertical height, and the slant height are in, a, are in the form of a right angle triangle. So if you know two of them, you simply use Pythagoras theorem to find the third one. So my vertical height here, h, I've subbed it into Pythagoras theorem along with the 3.3 and the 9. And your h to two decimal places works out as 8.37 centimeters. In the second part of the question, we're asked to work out the curved surface area of the cone. If you go to page 10 in your maths tables, it tells us the curved surface area of a cone is pi or l, where or is the radius, in this case 3.3, l is the slant height, in this case 9. If you plug it into your calculator to two decimal places, you get 93.31 centimeters squared. In A part three, we're given the net of the cone. Now bear in mind that in A part two, we worked out that the curved surface area of the cone is 93.31 centimeters squared. And now we've just been given the curved surface area of the cone as a 2D shape. So they've just broken it down for us. We can clearly see the radius of this net is nine centimeters. The radius of, the, of this shape is the same as the slant height of the cone. You should notice, when I think of the net of a cone, I always think of a party hat. You know what, a, at a children's birthday party, the party hats, they're in the shape of a cone. And if you flattened one of those party hats out, it would look like this shape. If you go to page nine in your maths tables, there's a formula for the area of a, of a sector. The area of a sector is pi r squared multiplied by theta over 360. So if I was trying to calculate the area of this section, I would use this formula. I know the area already because the area of this is the same as the curved surface area of the cone. So I know the area is 93.31 and I know the radius is nine. So if I sub in or equals nine and I sub in a is 93.31, the only thing I don't know is theta. So that's exactly what I did. I subbed in here and now I've got one equation and one unknown. What I, what I decided to do was to divide both sides by pi and nine squared. And I get theta over 360 is equal to all of this. If you plug this into your calculator, it's 0.366685. You multiply both sides by 360 to isolate theta and, and theta to the nearest degree works out as 132 degrees. We're told that the cup is filled with water until it's one centimeters from the top so as to avoid spillages. And we're asked to work out the volume the volume of, the, of water in the cone when it's one centimeter from the top. According to page 10 in the maths tables, the volume of a cone is one third by pi by r squared by h. I immediately know my h. If the vertical height of the cone is 8.37 centimeters and the water is one centimeter from the top, then the vertical height of the water is 7.37 centimeters. So I immediately know h, uh, but I need to work out the radius of the cone. Obviously, the further down we go, the smaller or the shorter the radius gets. You should recognize that we can think about geometry here in similar triangles. There are two different similar triangles here. One of the triangles is formed from the vertical height of the water, the slant height of the water, and the radius of the water. So if I draw that triangle, it's the radius I've labeled as or, and the height is 7.37. The other triangle similar to that is the vertical height of the actual cone, the radius of the actual cone, and the slant height of the cone. It's just a slightly larger triangle, but they're similar. All of the angles are the same. This is 3.3, and this is 8.37. Now again, if you can visualize it, you don't really need to take this down. You should recognize that the angle at the base of each of these is the same. It's both of them have that one. Both of these are 90 degree angles, and if two of the angles are the same, obviously this angle and this angle here are corresponding angles, so, they all, so the third set of angles are also the same. If angles are similar, then I can say that the side 3.3 divided by the radius, so the top of that one over the top of that one, is equal to the side of the big one, 8.37, divided by the side of the small one, 7.37. So I could say 3.3 over R is equal to 8.37 over 7.37. You should, to be honest, be able to visualize that without even drawing the diagrams. But if the diagrams help, there's no harm. The point is, I have one equation and one unknown. 
So I can actually solve this to get a value for R. And then I know R, I know H, I'll just sub into this formula and I'll get the volume of the water. What I would do here is multiply both sides by 7.37. And I would multiply both sides by R. And if I do that, I end up with 3.3 by 7.37 equals 8.37 times R. I would then divide both sides by 8.37. So 3.3 by 7.37 over 8.37 will give me R. I'm gonna plug this into my calculator, get a value for the radius of the water, the radius of the water from the center to the edge, and then sub into this formula and get the volume of the water. When you plug it into your calculator, R works out as 2.9057. Now we can get the volume of the cone. So I know my radius, I've worked out the value of my radius, the height was given in the question, so if you sum into the formula for the volume of a cone, your answer works out as 65.2 centimeters cubed. Now in part C, this was an interesting question which you probably haven't seen since you were doing your junior cert. This kind of question can often come up at junior cert level, but it would have been quite hard I think for leaving certs because you wouldn't be used to this kind of thing. Usually when, you, when we're given the flow rate, or the race at 2.5 centimeters per second, we think of differentiation. We don't need to use differentiation here. In this case, we're talking about the cone and we need to fill it up to the point F. In part B, we've worked out that if you fill up the cone to the point F, the volume is 65.2 centimeters cubed. We're told that water is flowing from a cylindrical pipe and at a rate of 2.5 centimeters per second. We're told the radius of the cylinder is 0 0.8. What I want you to recognize is I want you to think about the cylinder like this. Let's say the distance from here to here is 2.5 centimeters. That's the amount of water that's gonna flow out of the cylinder in one second. So this will say is 2.5 centimeters. I continue on, maybe this is five centimeters. So this is the water that'll flow out from the first to the second second. The amount of water that flows out of this cylinder is 2.5 centimeters per second. So it's 2.5 centimeters of the cylinder is flowing out every second. So to work out how much water is flowing out of the cylinder each second, we want to work out the volume. What is the volume of a cylinder that has a radius of 0.8 and a height of 2.5? If I work out the radius of the, the, the volume if the radius is 0.8 and the height is 2.5, I'll work out how much water flows into the cone each second. Page 10 in the maths tables tells me the volume of a, of a cylinder is pi or squared h. If you plug all of this into your calculator, you use your variables, the volume is 5.026548 centimeters cubed. This is the amount of water contained in 2.5 centimeters of the cylinder. Or in other words, this is the amount of water that flows out of the cylinder each second, flows into the cone each second. I know the volume, I want to know how long is it going to take for the volume of water in the cone to be 65.2. And I know that there's this much water flows into the cone each second. So 65.2 divided by my figure here will tell me how long it takes for the cone to fill up to the point F. And I was asked to leave my answer to the nearest second. If you plug this into your calculator to the nearest second, it works out as 13 seconds. So that's your final answer for part C. In the final part of this question, we're told that the company wants to lower the level of water that they pour into these cones so that the amount of water, the volume of water is simply 60 centimeters cubed. We want to know how far below the rim it, does the water need to be so that the volume of water is 60 centimeters cubed. There's a load of different ways of doing this question. The way that I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna broach it as, I want to find the volume of the water. I want to use the formula. I know from page 10 of my maths tables, the volume of water is one third pi or squared h. And I know that the volume in this case is gonna be 60. So I know V is equal to 60 centimeters cubed. Now there's an obvious problem here that if I sub in now, I don't know R and I don't know H. So I have two unknowns, so technically I wouldn't be able to find either of them. What I need to do is use this diagram to get R in terms of H or to get H in terms of R. If I can get one of these variables in terms of the other one, 
I'll then be able to sub into this formula, I'll be able to find H or I'll be able to find OR and I'll be able to answer the question. Again, we need to think of similar triangles here. So there's two triangles at play here. One of the triangles is, I know this distance is 3.3 and I know that the entire height is 8.37. But the other triangle that I want to consider is the triangle from the center of the, of the top of the water to the edge. And at the moment, I don't know what the radius of that should be, so I'm just gonna call it OR. And then the height of that from here to here, I don't know what that would be either, so I'm just gonna call it H. If we use similar triangles in the same fashion as we did in the previous part of the question, I could say that OR, the radius of the, of the water, divided by 3.3, which is the radius of the cone, is equal to H, the height of the water, divided by 8.37, the height of the cone. All I'm doing there is I'm using similar triangles. The reason I want to do this is, like I said, I want to try and get H in terms of OR, or OR in terms of H, it doesn't matter which. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna isolate my H. In order to isolate H, I multiply both sides by 8.37, and I end up concluding that H is equal to 8.37 OR divided by 3.3. Now this is very useful to me. I can now, I now know what the height is in terms of OR. And that's all that I need in order to sum into this equation. The volume of a cone is 1 third pi OR squared H. I know the volume of water, the, the water is in the shape of a cone. I know its volume is 60. I know instead of H, I can sum in all of this. And if I do that, the only unknown in the question will be OR. So let's just have a look. I'll take this down over here. The height of the cone is 8.37 or over 3.3. So let's just sub into the formula for the volume of a cone. I know the volume of the water is 60 and it's equal to 1 third times pi times or squared. But instead of H, I know that I can put in 8.37 or divided by 3.3. Hopefully at this stage it'll make sense to you why I've done this. I now have one equation and one unknown which means that I can solve this and find a value for the radius. Once I have a value for the radius, I'll sub it into this and I'll get a corresponding value for the height and I'll be able to answer the question. So what I want to do now is just work through the calculations here. Okay, so I've worked my way through the calculations here. What I did first was I decided to try and get rid of the 3.3 on the bottom here. So I multiply both sides by 3.3, I get 60 by 3.3. Then I've one third pi, and I multiplied 8.37 OR by OR squared, and I got 8.37 OR cubed. I then decided to multiply both sides by three to eliminate the, the one third. So 60 by 3.3 by three works out as 594. I then decided to try and isolate the OR cubed, so I divided both sides by 8.37 pi. And OR cubed works out as 22.5897. I got the cubic root of both sides and the radius if the volume of water is 60 centimeters cubed, the radius is 2.82685 centimeters. Then I remember that I'm not actually looking for the radius. What I'm looking for is this distance x. I need to find the height before I can do anything else. Towards the start of the question, I worked out h in terms of or. The height is 8.37 times or over 3.3. So I subbed in my value for OR, and it turns out that in order for the volume of the water to be 60 centimeters cubed, the height needs to be 7.1699 centimeters. I know that the entire cone, the actual cone, is 8.37 centimeters high. That's the, that's the perpendicular height of the cone. And X is the, differ, is the distance from the top of the water to the top of the cone. So to work out X, it's the entire height of the cone minus the height that I'm after working out. The height of the cone minus the height of the water to, to one decimal place works out as 1.2 centimeters. And that's your final answer for this question. X must be 1.2 centimeters.